with a thief because no one's stealing. Right. But when the problem arose, you need to deal with these problems. When you had the times of Christ, there weren't many problems faced then. Not all the solutions were provided. In fact, if you have read Christ's works in the New Testament, he says there are many things there are many things to tell you, but I will not tell you now because you are not ready for it. I'm paraphrasing. But when I go and I send him, right. he will come and guide you into all the truth. So from Christ's own admission in the New Testament, as the authors have reported, yeah. he has not come to give you complete guidance of everything. He says there are many things to tell you, but you are not ready for them. But when he comes, when the spirit of truth comes... Yeah, the spirit of truth, yeah. I agree with No, that. the spirit of truth, right? He will guide you into all the truth. The Holy Spirit. No, that's what the church and the authors reinterpreted Christ's so, so words. So are you saying Jesus was referring to? No, what Jesus was referring to was another paraclete like him. What, Prophet Muhammad? No, another paraclete. Oh. The word he uses is yeah. another comforter, another paraclete like him. So the Holy Spirit yeah. is not like Christ like him. Paraclete is someone who is like Christ that will come with guidance. Mm. So if I ask you, what is the guidance from the Holy Spirit about drinking and driving? Okay, so uh, drinking and driving, well, and of course people it's, getting killed. Oh, it's completely wrong, of course it is. Where did the Holy Spirit say that? Well, from the Bible, we meant to be responsible. Bible doesn't say that you stop drinking sure, at all. But this is what the beauty of the Bible is. See, Jesus set principles. You know, God's given a lot of the things we know within us. You know, the morals, our conscience, everything's within us. So Jesus taught us to use principles and not just laws and regulations, but to go deeper than that. So we start thinking for ourselves. What I find problem with organized religion is we give up brain over to others to think for us. Did God, did, did God not give us organized guidance how to live in a community? Uh, he did, yeah. Right. So, so, yeah. so why but would there's you... an extreme of that, no, I feel. Extreme of anything isn't good, no. right? So let's go back to another example. Let's see how the, the Bible or the Holy Spirit provides a solution. Let's say there is a Christian husband. Mm. He believes in Christianity. But he gets drunk because he can't control himself in order to drink. He comes and beats his wife every single day. So one day he took her, you know, smashed her eyes out. Yeah. Next day broke her bones and so on and so forth. Yeah. But he's quite faithful. He's not committing adultery and he abuses her every single day. And he's breaking her bones left, right and center. She has lost love of this individual. How can she now move on to another life to get married again to someone else maybe she, she would love from this abusive husband? According to, are you asking me a question? According I'm asking you, what is the solution? The Bible oh, or the, the Holy Spirit? Who's the, okay. the new one? Well, the Bible's quite clear provide. about that, that we yeah. need to, uh, they need to separate from that situation. You need to get away. I mean, uh, look, we are, uh, we know already within within us, we need to get away from that dangerous situation. So that She woman, doesn't love him anymore. And she doesn't want him, want him to be in his life anymore. She wants another life. Right. She wants to get married again. Can she? Okay, so the, this is a very a, 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 a big question. We need a solution, uh, uh, a practical yeah. solution from yeah. either the Bible or the spirit of truth, which Jesus said will come and give you that solution. Okay, well, hopefully, look, you, you want people to make things better. Look, you give them, they, they need time and not to do anything drastic. First of all, she needs to get out of that situation, which is separation. And they got married, so they obviously loved each other and they've maybe got children. Children, so there's a lot at stake. So according to the Bible, the best thing would be to see if they can work this situation she out couldn't from a anymore. distance. That's it. Okay. She can't. So you're, of course, now this is a difference. So yeah, we say this is very deep. I mean, it's very complex. Very high, it's very complex. And it's very common. And no one so now, is very common. Very common. Yes. So now what's the solution? Can she get divorced and marry another man that she would love? perhaps again, and start a new life from this abusive husband. What, what is the answer from the, uh, according to Islam? Like? We can tell you, but what is the solution that the Bible or the Holy Spirit provides, which is supposed to be yeah. the one to provide the final guidance? As I mentioned, 
we would hope that if both parties, it's like a threefold chord. See, if a, if a marriage only has just the two parties, it's like a rope with two chords. But if they both have God within it, it's a stronger chord. So you would hope that they can make things better. No, I know you it's said... It's not working. Well, this is a much drastic situation. And the much drastic situation requires a practical solution, sure. which is? Well, God instituted marriage, ultimately. Mm -hmm. And if they both love God, then really the one who instituted that now he marriage... Has, now, he, this guy, the husband, has a basic level love of God, but he's a Christian. He believes in Christ, died for his sins. So now, how does this woman get out of this abuse abusive husband and an abusive life and start a new life with someone else. Yeah, well, uh, this is, I've not ever been in this situation. I've never many given women it lots are. of thought so, and many are. Yeah. Um, and you put me on the spot to think. That's why I asked, like, maybe you can help me. Sure. If, with the Christianity yeah. doesn't provide a practical solution because it mm. cannot and it does not allow women to get divorced in this situation because there is no law apart okay. from okay. committing adultery. So can I answer that? Yeah. See, this is what I'm going back to. Organized religion, a lot of their teachings, they've made so strict. We've got to separate what really the scriptures say and what God's ways are to what organized religion. You know what the scripture says? She cannot get divorced unless there is adultery involved. If a man or woman commits adultery, sleeps with another man or woman, yeah. this can be a valid ground for divorce and okay. no other. Okay. So yeah, I'll, I'll be... Or infidelity, maybe, yeah. maybe if yeah. he becomes an atheist or a non-Christian. Yeah. Look, I, In I, both of these cases, he doesn't commit adultery and he's not becoming a non-Christian. The Bible doesn't permit any grounds for divorce. So what does she do in practice? Okay, I have a look at that whole subject. Now think uh, about so, it now, critically. No, no, but so critically... Yeah. There is no solution for her, there is no divorce for her. No, but what I'm saying to you is... I haven't looked at other so the whole subject of that from the Bible perspective. You can examine later, but you will yeah. find there is no other yeah. grounds for yeah. divorce. So I can't comment. So, so, so once, can't once comment. you are learned on the subject that there is no other grounds for divorce, she cannot divorce. Okay. So now she is stuck in limbo, she is going to have to live all her life, and not fulfill her physical needs okay. with this abusive husband and the abusive husband won't okay. even come so and, you know... Can I answer that? I know from, from my understanding of the Bible, I know God is, is, is so loving and He loves marriages. He wants them to succeed and even if there's big issues like that, He wants to find a, a, a way. So, I don't think God is going to really put people in a, in a dangerous situation. It's very common. People are like they in are, that situation. They, they are. Do you they know how are. much domestic violence happens? But our, our God, obviously... It's not working. Because there's nothing they're receiving from God. Because God has told them, the only grounds that you can have divorce is this. But it goes back to my other question. Why then Allah allowed I will, his original I, I, I was books? I was answering, right? So let's come why back to this. He put, I know firstly, you, firstly, I said, the laws and regulations were localized only for them. I don't know. I think they were uni. I still think they were universal because what you I, gave I, me. I'll give you an example. It wasn't universal. That example could That's have been universal. back then as well. No, I'm just giving you an example. It's not universal because a universal should pro a solution should provide a solution to this. No. And Islam provides that solution. Sure, sure. Islam says she can get divorced. So my brother, but you, you gave me that. Did you not see that? Sorry. She can get divorced and start a new life. And so that is the law of God. Sorry, they can get this divorced, this yeah. woman yes. who have been abused yeah. by the Christian yes, husband, yes, yes, yes. she can get divorced in Islam okay. and she can start a new life, not okay. living with an abusive husband. Okay, but what I want to say is, you know this example you gave me? Mm -hmm. That example could have been back in the day as well. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. The, the, not just the, now. These laws and regulations that you're talking about in the old scriptures, they're localized, they're not universal. But why it's did Allah came, allow that rigid law? Oh, so what law did... Firstly, you cannot be certain that this was indeed the law from God. Why? Because what Christ preached as his gospel is what people are recounting what they heard from people because they were not direct so eyewitnesses. So how do you know the original message? Because you say... Because you, you don't know what the original message is where. I thought your scriptures say to believe in it and to... No, no, we are meant to believe in what God revealed. So I have faith that God revealed the Torah. How can you believe in something that was revealed back then you when seen, you don't even you, know what it was? Have you seen your great-great-grandmother? Do you believe she existed? Um, of course, 
yeah, yeah. So you can believe she existed? But that's, but of course, when God Tim, says to Tim, be, can you believe yeah, she yeah. existed? But there's believing she existed, yeah. but to believe. We believe but, the laws from yeah, God yeah. in the Torah yeah. or in the gospel existed. But can I reply? Yeah. yeah. But when it says to believe, it's not the belief you're talking about. To believe means to actually understand. That no, that's not what the Quran is saying. Deeper understanding. That's not what the Quran is saying. It's not just belief. No, that's not what the Quran is saying. Though. Though. No, that's what the Quran is saying. That's blind faith. To say no, just to, that was Tim, my Tim. Hinduism. So you, just you, believe. So you have misunderstood what the Quran is saying. The Quran is not saying that believe and practice those things, teachings as they are and, and embody them in your lives. That's what the Quran is saying. The Quran is simply saying, believe in the revelation that God sent to them. And within this revelation, this was God's messages. And God messages, people corrupted them. That's what the Quran is but saying. But what were them revelations then? The Quran, Quran often tells what these revelations were. Other times, it tells that people corrupted those messages. So how so, can we believe in them revelations when we don't know about you, them? I just told you, I just told you. The belief that you're talking about is not what the Quran is talking about using the word belief. The Quran is simply saying, affirm that God has revealed those messages, those script, you know, divine revelations to them. So when it says, when the Quran says, believe in the angels, have I seen an angel? I haven't. But I believe. I have faith in the All angels. Right, can I reply so, to that? This is why I love the, the teachings of Christ and Christianity because it's deeper than that. It's not just believing the angels are there. It's understanding. Have you seen the, an angel? The, the purpose. Sorry, I was going to explain. Yeah, what I meant was we understand the purpose of angels and 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 what who they are and and not just you know organized religion is just like you're following these things and you're not understanding uh, the deeper. Firstly, you're not you're, you're not against organized religion, as you said. If God revealed laws to be in an organized I, society, yeah, yeah. you're happy with yeah, that. I'm happy with that, but right. I'm not happy with the, with the extremes. extremes. That, that's fine. So we're not talking about extremities. We're not talking about extremes. Are because like, right. So now we're talking about the reasons why God hasn't protected them. Firstly, it wasn't for all people at all times, yeah. right? It wasn't meant to be. And secondly, certain scriptures, God entrusted their preservation to a certain group of people of that faith community. They failed to do so and they will be accountable for it. Quran, on the other hand, try to understand now the significance. Because it's going to be the final guidance from God, God took on himself the task of preservation and protecting it because there will be no other prophet no other messenger no other book coming from God so God will protect it because it's going to be the final revelation and needs to stay finally protected for all people at all times that is the answer I know coming the back thing is like even more I met Mormons today and they say the same thing as you exactly what do the they same. say they say they got the final you know the, the book of Mormon they got mm -hmm. Joseph Smith who's like um, prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. and they say this is the final revelation and, and have you why... examined that revelation does it give you all final guidance or everything um, no but I, I, right. I, so let's leave this out then because yeah. if you haven't examined so let's leave it out if there was a Mormon there I would say come in our discussion and see whether I have all the guidance so Christian Christianity, I've given you two examples. Let me give you a third example and yeah, okay. we'll end it there okay. in terms of examples okay. of comparisons. Okay. Do you know how the whole world is enslaved under interest and usury? Do you know that? Yeah. Banking system yeah. under usury and interest? Absolutely. What does the Bible provide solutions to this problem? What solution does it provide? Well, I mean, uh, we should live a simple, see again, principles. Jesus taught we should live a simple life. And, um, you know, he said, Can you take your... interest? Give interest? Can, say that again, so can, can a Christian we... take or give interest and usury? Well, so if I borrow yes, money from yes, you, 1,000 okay. pounds, do I have to pay 1,200 pounds? No. Okay, so the Bible teaches fairness and it teaches that you know we are brothers and we should do things out of fairness, really. The Bible teaches the it's okay to deal with interests. Well, it depends because obviously if it's enslaved, if you enslave someone, then you're doing them wrong. Once, so you, the once you say interest is okay, then... No, ultimately, in, in God's in perfect society... Where does God say interest is not okay? Sorry? In the Bible. Where, where does he say that? Where does he say that? Where did Jesus all say know that of, he came to abolish the laws of interest that was found in the Old Testament? Okay, all I understand is that when Christ brings his kingdom or his government, mm. that there won't there won't be need for money because no, 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 money, no. you know, money is the root of all. He's evil. not here. The law that he provided sure. in his teaching, sure. he didn't come to abolish the law. 
He came to fulfill it. Yes. So, in the Old Testament, the laws of interest are there. You don't take interest between yourself in the community, same community, but you give interest to others. That's why banking system is mainly invented with interest by which Jews. people? Exactly. Well done, my Jews friend. They created all the problems. They created all of this. Yeah, again, that's so now, my... Yeah. So what we're seeing now, the world is enslaved in this Jews. system of interest because it's coming from that scripture which allows it. Which, which, which scripture? Say that again. The Old Testament. But which scripture are you referring to? The Old Testament talks about interest. Um, specifically, can you quote which one talks but, about interest? If you want, I can pull up the verses, but it's well known. It's not, look, look. If, if you want to no, find no, out okay. which verses, no, 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 okay. I can bring it. I can, no, no, no. I can show it to you. It's, it's okay, not a problem. Okay. But I'm showing in principle, yeah, yeah, yeah. you have a teaching in the Old Testament like that. Yeah. We know because of this, the world is in a big mess. Is in a big mess? It is. Yeah. This is not yeah. a solution to this problem of usury and enslavement. Enslavement. Yes. The Quran provides a solution. It says. God and his messenger declares war on interests. Don't take and give interest, right? That's what the Quran is affirming. So now we have a solution which is practical. We have a solution which is very needed. So a final revelation gave us or gives us the best solution from all times. No interests, no gambling, no drinking, alcohol. So as you now realize, when you said, what? So how would you what, get a what, house what then, you, like, no, in this country? When, like, uh, say if a young, they want to get on a property ladder, like, how would a, 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 a Muslim person rent it? Uh, rent it if you don't have a property. A lot of times that's worse off. I mean, no, 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 many have no, 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 benefited no, 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 from you, having a property. You're not giving interest. Rent it. If you have cash, buy it with cash. If you well, run, have been worse off renting and never had it's these. It's not about worse. Off. We're talking about not dealing with interest, not consuming, yeah. and not giving others, right? Taking or giving. So when we talk about the final revelation from God, Christ was referring to someone who will come after him, who will guide him to all the truth. I've given you three examples in which the Holy Spirit doesn't provide any solution if he indeed was the paraclete that Christ was speaking about. Christ was speaking about someone who he said, you know what he said? If I don't go, he will not come. Say that again. Sorry, if if I... I do not go, he will not come. Okay. When I go, I will send him. Was the Holy Spirit present according to the Christian teaching, whatever the Holy Spirit is, while Christ was there? Say that question again. Was the Holy Spirit Was the Holy Spirit coming and going right. to people during the time of Christ? The answer is yes. Yes. yes but what right. Christ said, if I don't go, he will not come. That means it's incumbent upon him that he goes and then that spirit of truth comes. That means it couldn't have been the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is already present in the understanding that the Christians have. That paraclete could not be. In fact, Right. Many Christian scholars in the 1800s, 1900s believed the Holy Spirit referred to a human individual, not the, sorry, sorry, the paraclete, what am I saying? The paraclete that Christ was speaking to about was a human individual, not the Holy Spirit. Because well, they realize what this context is. a big is. jump you're making and saying then that's the Prophet Muhammad. Because no, no, if why we was establish, it so am ambiguous there? It's not ambiguous. It's not very clear. Sorry. If I don't go, he's not going to come. When I go, he will come and guide you into all the truths. And I have many things to tell you, but you cannot bear them now. So why did he not complete his mission and give them all the guidance when it was meant for him to tell them everything? Why did he leave it to someone else? Why? Well, we, well, the Holy. I feel that's the Holy Spirit revealing. Many Is the Holy Spirit revealing to the Catholics, to the Protestant, Protestants, to the Coptics, to the Armenians? Which group of Christians is the Holy Spirit guiding? Good question, and I think it's who is sincere because a lot of people in organized religions they within claim, the Christian like, I'll give you an example. They say that um, we, we don't want to fight, we want we believe in peace, and then Catholics kill Protestants and they get involved with war and they're killing their own brothers. We see that in a lot of organized religions, they start fighting, so of course, they don't have to. So, Holy which group Spirit. of Christians is the, is the Holy Spirit guiding? I, I, 
I feel is the ones who are pure to the sense who that are they, they don't lift up sword who, against their brother. Who, who are they? they Name them. Uh, well, Which group of Christians God are they? God knows who they are. I mean, it could so, be the people here. It could are they be, the Catholics? Well, I gave an example where God teaches that we must love and have peace and not kill our brothers. So if Catholics are, are, are blessing their walls and fighting their own brothers, then of so course they the can't have the Holy Spirit. Are they the Protestants? Many, I can name Protestants, I can name um, Muslims, Hindus, many fighting. And the problem is when organized religion gets... No, no, let's talk, about, let's talk about organized religion. As you realized, if you say the Holy Spirit is going to guide you unto all the truth, mm. you do not even know which group of Christians the Holy Spirit is guiding. So, say that again, sorry, I'm getting distracted because of... Uh, you, you, you're not sorry. sure sorry. which group of the Christians the Holy Spirit is guiding. Okay. Well, we're not sure. You're not sure. Group. Are you? Are you sure? Which are that the Egyptian no, we, we are because like there's a lot of things we know within us that God's already put a lot of uh, His truths within us. And um, so, if I were to, I, for earnest, as I look up to God, if I were to now go to a church right. to see that this church is following the guidance of God and the Holy Spirit is guiding them, which church would that be? Well, I, this is the problem I'm finding. Um, you, you look at their fruits, like Jesus said, look at their fruits like a tree. You know, a, a good tree will produce good fruits, a bad tree will produce bad fruits. And it's the same with the way of life. <laughs> it gets loud here, doesn't it? <laughs> no, I don't know how you constantly, you must get used to this. Eh? Anyway, I will selectively ignore background noise. I know, I need to learn, I need to learn to block off everything. Um, Look at the fruits of a lot of organized religion. We see it here as well. This is the devil's when people are fighting. I don't think we can have God's blessing here, where people are just, I don't know, it's divided. People yeah. are getting divided. And we, we know that. So, which church would you recommend this me to the, go I and say? The spiritual church. And I think this is what Jesus where is was it? teaching. Where is it? I feel here, like, there's a scripture that says, when no, no. two. I understand in principle. But which church? Church, can you direct me towards in London, in UK? Here, right now, every that's not a church. church can, that's not a, a church. spiritual church. So that's not a church. So that basically, now you're saying I don't think there's a physical. So that's basically, now saying the Holy Spirit is guiding individuals. Can do, oh, and collectively, but he can. Who? He collectively, can, who? Where can I go to this collective group of people? It's a good and I can question. say, ah, oh, this no, is it's that a good church. question. It's a very good question. You, do you see and, the problem? And Jesus said, in our time. Tim, do you see the problem? I'm trying to answer you. Like, um, I feel in this last days, Jesus said we'll be like in a wilderness. It will be a difficult situation to find a collective group that's so pure, and in a way, we are on our own sometimes, and this is so difficult now. We've the Holy Spirit, Spirit be very clear and say, this is the group on which I have guidance. Just tell me one group today that's no, no, so pure no, 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 no. There isn't any. The Come problem, on. the problem to me is this. You are relying on a teaching of Christ in which he says, when I go, I'm going to send him. If he doesn't come, you're not going to get the guidance. If I don't go, he's not going to come and give you the guidance. So he leaves it to the Holy Spirit according to you, and you're not even sure who this Holy Spirit is guiding, and how is guided Bad and yet it is so important to receive that guidance well, I, I do like the aspect where Jesus said, you know, listen to his voice, um, to li li tune into that spirit. He said, we worship in spirit and truth. And, and I feel this is the deepest stuff where we have so much trust in God that I look to him. I don't want no middleman. I, I, I don't mind teachers, but there's a scripture in the Bible that says, do not trust in any man in whom no salvation belongs. So man cannot save us and the problem is with a lot of us we give our brains to the imams to the priests to the uh, scientists to the um, governments and we we trusting them so much where I feel we should look, be trusting God yes and, and his messenger and all that becomes an idol right. okay and, Tim can I ask you a different question yeah, please again? please what was the mission of Christ when he was here Okay, um, it was of course to to bring us closer to God, and I feel that's the main thing. What did he say about God? Did he identify himself as God? 
of course, God, God he said uh, he was his father. He, he, well, he, he wasn't God. Right, so he didn't no, identify. He wasn't the almighty God, of course. Okay, so he didn't. This is again organized religion teaching lies, that like many doctrines, not just within Christianity, but I feel Hinduism. No, no, so what, not so what Christianity that you're upholding. So he wasn't telling people about that he is God. And for example, and yet we find Christian teaching is that. He no, is but not just is this hellfire, torture, um, many religions. Okay, I have to take that call. Oh, yeah, okay, okay no problem. Um, we talk again okay, anyway. We talk again. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Should we? Take we care. can speak again. Right, yeah. Thank you.